Welcome back to The Table. Today, Ryan and I are going to be taking a look and giving you a look at Evolution Another World. This one is from Crowd Games. This is a follow-up, if you will, from yeah. Evolution New World, but this one takes kind of the fantasy approach. It's a, another world. Literally so, takes place. So to speak. And it is a little world. bit more family friendly, I think. This one is kind of like an, maybe a good introduction to the concept of the evolution I, system. I would say so. This actually takes the, the theme of evolution and kind of flips it around a little bit. If you've played those games, you know that you're kind of building out creatures and evolving these creatures over time with traits. But while the, the focus of those games was finding food, foraging, attacking, and, and sort of trying to survive as your creature's population dwindled and they died off and just all of this stuff, um, that's gone. Yeah, it takes it, a lot of the, the some, uh, some of the upkeep things yeah, out of the equation. Uh, this is about um, this magical world where you are still creating those creatures with that same kind of trait-based system by making your creatures evolve over time. But the whole premise of this game is that you're trying to absorb energy. So there's no more watering hole, there's no more food. You're gaining energy onto your cards with the hope of eventually transmuting them. These, these creatures become uh, beings of pure energy. And as soon as you have three, you win the game. So this does a few things that I want to talk about first of all, because we did say it was kind of maybe a more family friendly slant. Your creatures can never die. I think yeah. that's a big thing that you don't have to worry about losing food. You don't have to worry about other creatures eating them. They'll never die. However, there's still a lot of conflict that happens because each creature is racing to collect four energy from the supply or from the source, which are these cards that get flipped every round. And every round only has a, a few, based on player count, that only has a few of those energy uh, gems. And all of the creatures from all of the players are competing for a very limited amount of energy. And once that's out, you are going to kind of turn and look around at other players and start trying to steal energy from them as well. Yeah, on your turn, you can do a number of things. But like Ryan said, we're all trying to get at least four or max four energy on each creature so that then they can transmute. And transmuting is an action. It doesn't just naturally yeah. happen. So there is some timing involved here because I might be able to get the four energy on my creature, but then on someone else's turn, guess who's the target? Right, you gotta have, gonna you gotta happen. keep it, yeah. So while there is no uh, creatures dying or anything like that, this is a give and take, kind of a tug mm -hmm. of war game, particularly at two players, but even at more players, you're going to be making progress and then having other players target you to reduce that progress. Uh, all the while, everyone is trying to inch forward and get three of these all at the same time at the end of your turn and you're gonna win. Yeah, as soon as you can get your third one to go. But like David said, there's a number of different things you're, you're trying to manage while you're doing that. And there's a variety of different actions that you can take that push you towards that goal. Now, one thing I like about this evolution system, it's just one deck of cards and it's very easy to teach. With every single one of these cards, you're only doing two things with it. You're either playing it with its back face up and effectively creating a new creature. You'll see the artwork for the new creature. You'll see the four possible gems and you'll see that David and I already have several because one of the things you can do in your turn is just create a new creature. It starts empty with no traits. It's just a generic creature. But the other thing you can do with a card is choose the top or the bottom. These cards actually flip around and you're going to tuck it under to give it some kind of trait. And these traits are going to help you attack other players. They're going to help you defend from other players. They might give you some energy bonuses when you come and get energy, or they might just give you some special rules that only apply to that specific creature. So when you're playing these traits on your creature, you're technically like kind of evolving this fantasy beast into something that plays the way you want it to play. And again, they kind of lean into that with all the artwork is very family friendly, very playful. fantasy, playful, yeah, very, colorful. Yeah, for sure. And those traits are really interesting. The, uh, I want to make a point of saying the aggressive ones, the red ones, those are required to even attack. So yeah. even though there is attacking and no death, attacking itself takes a little effort. You can't just randomly attack. You have to have a trait card that's aggressive, one of these reddish ones. And then you're just doing what's on that card. Yeah. There is no natural, I'm going to attack you and you lose something. You, you basically resolve the attack cards that you have attached, the traits that is, to that creature. And it's going to, like we said, take some energy away. It might put them to sleep because that is effectively what happens throughout a round is you're going to use your creatures to do a number of things. And sometimes you might get put to sleep if you're attacked. If you attack, yeah. you fall asleep. So effectively you can't do anything else with that creature. This 
allows the game system such that you can't just like continually use a creature to keep taking crystals and then transmute at the end of the round. <laughs> right, yeah, there are a variety of different actions. And that attack action that David mentioned is important, but I also want to mention too with that, it's really neat how the attack actions and defense, defense actions pair because there are specific attack actions that, like David said, will put you to sleep or take a trade away or take a gem from you, an energy gem. But then you have defense cards that say, well, you can never take a gem from this card yeah. or you can never take you know, a trade card away from me. But balancing those traits and figuring out how to play them out to make your creature the best for what you want to do is a key part of the game because you have to you know, look around at the table and see what other strategies people are doing. There are some cards that maybe want you to come to the source, which is an action. You can just take a gem from the source and that energy and power up your creature, but there's only a limited number there. So it's kind of a race to take that. You might have some that's locked on top that you can only access if you have particular traits, but those cards are few and far between. A lot of times it's just this competition for getting that. And then there are some traits that say, well, if you take one, then all your other creatures get one, or there's other yeah. ways to kind of create combos from going here. And if a player's doing that, well, then you really want to limit their options. Every player's going to want to take, take those energy crystals because you don't want one player just to get a ton. So that's just one element of, of how players are going to actually interact with each other as you take these actions. Yeah, and every player can kind of play their own game. I will say in a game like this, any game where there's tug of war and it's like a race to three of these, there's going to be some times where you're like, okay, well, I can't just collect energy. Right. I've got to do something because if we both just keep collecting energy, whoever happens to collect the energy first is going to win. Now, that's when you have to shift and do some attacking. And you're going to want to take into consideration where you're putting your traits. You kind of want, this is not exactly engine building, but when you have a bunch of creatures out, it really comes into play where you put those traits because you might have one creature. And then if you transmute that creature and he was sort of your <laughs> go-to creature for doing things, then all that's gone. I mean, the good news is you have one of these, but the bad news is that creature's gone. He's, so he's maybe become pure energy. If, if he was your big attacking creature, you're probably going to have to rebuild a creature to do some attacking. Yeah, and you've definitely seen games like that before uh, where if one player, yeah, if you get four crystals, if you get four energy on one card, you, you are the target. Yes. So you better make sure that that card has defense. What you really want to do in your turn, since attacking puts you to sleep, which is basically exhausted, and since there's a limited number of these crystals, it's very difficult to get to your fourth energy and transmute in the same turn. Yeah. Figuring out a way to do that with your traits and by solving that puzzle, that is one of the key things to the game that makes you feel very smart if you're like, oh, well actually if I put this trait on this creature, attack with this creature, it earns gems and this trait gives those gems to another card. Now this card has enough. Granted, I just took an action. I have to hope that it still has four gems by the time it gets back around to me. And that is going to, uh, it's going to happen. You're going to be attacked a lot. But it is kind of like we said, family friendly because you're not losing your creature. You can put a lot of traits on somebody. There's no limit to keep track of. There's no real complicated math that's being involved no, with these not, things at all. There's not a lot of math. And even though it is family friendly, there are puzzles to be had here. Like Ryan was just saying, when you pick up your cards at the beginning of the round and you're going to get two cards plus X number of cards depending on how many creatures you have with energy, you're going to want to look thoroughly at all those traits because the traits in your hand are absolutely your route to you know, navigating what he was mm -hmm. just saying. Say you have a creature that's close to four. Well, maybe is there a trait here that can protect them against attack right. so that they don't fall asleep so that you can get that, maybe do something with them, and then have them not fall asleep so that you can then transmute with them, things like that. You, so you're gonna wanna just take a very, very close look at all these cards. And like we said, there's two sides of them. Yeah. So any given time, if you have three cards, you're really gonna be looking at six different traits. And when you do find those moments where you can kind of slip one in there and get that transmutation, it does feel very satisfying. And that's something that you can do at all ages of play. It doesn't require like a great level of heavy thought to find those moments. They can come with all the traits with some of the clever plays you do at the table. Yeah, and if you end up liking this game, then it's probably a good stepping stone to yeah. playing Evolution New World. Because I do think there's a fair amount more going on there. This does feel like a streamlined, I mean, more family-friendly version. And they said that they've, they've been very upfront of that. They said, you know, they traded in some of the complexity for a very easy to learn game that you can kind of jump right into with this one. Yeah, this is definitely a faster playing game. For sure, for very sure. streamlined, very fast. 
that's why we say yeah great for families great for people that are more casual gamers or just looking for an entry point into that evolution uh, series yeah so if you have any more questions about it please make them in the comments below we'll get down there and answer whatever yep. we can until next time of course make sure everyone has fun at the table and we'll see you then